Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be learning about the electrolysis of aluminium oxide. Now the reason why we want to extract aluminium is because it's a very very useful metal. So I've shown some pictures here of some of the applications and um, aluminium is a very lightweight metal and it's also fairly strong so that combination allows it to be used for example in aircraft. It's also unreactive uh, due to an oxide layer so it wouldn't necessarily react with water and hence you can use it in uh, foil to wrap food and so on. So it's extracted from an ore called bauxite, which contains the ionic substance aluminium oxide. And in order to electrolyze this, you have to first melt it. Now melting it isn't really straightforward because the melting point is about 2000 degrees Celsius. And that's going to require a lot of energy and it's going to cost a lot of money. So to overcome this, we add a substance called molten cryolite. And this lowers the melting point to about 850 degrees Celsius. This means we now have to use less energy and it makes the whole process more economical. So let's take a closer look at what happens at the electrodes. So this is a basic setup of an electrolysis apparatus. And what you have is your positive electrode and your negative electrode. So because aluminium is going to form positive ions, it's going to be attracted to this negative electrode and it's going to pick up electrons and form aluminium atoms. Now, it's not really set up like this in industry because uh, the aluminium would have to be physically scraped off this electrode, which is very, very time consuming. So they've got a modified version of this that looks a bit like this. And what you have is your negative electrode uh, over here, sort of at the bottom of the casing. So because the aluminium is going to be attracted to this, the molten aluminium will sit at the bottom and this makes it easier to just open a tap and uh, pour the aluminium into a container for example. The positive electrode is made out of graphite which is a form of carbon that can conduct electricity and over time this just wears away and has to be replaced approximately every 30 days. So let's have a look at what happens to the aluminium ions once you melt the aluminium oxide. So you've got a mixture of aluminium ions and these negatively charged oxygen atoms, also called oxide ions. So I'm going to start off by looking at the aluminium ions. So they've got a charge of 3 plus, which means that they've lost 3 electrons. So they're going to be attracted to the uh, negative electrode. So I'm just going to show uh, 3 of these aluminium ions. And they're each going to pick up three electrons from this negative electrode. So that means they're now going to lose that three plus charge. I'm just going to get rid of that. And you've now got uh, neutral aluminium atoms and uh, they're still going to be in the molten state, which means you can just simply open a tap and you can pour this into a container. The oxide ions are going to pair up and they're going to form oxygen gas. So they, so these two oxide ions are going to pair up, they're going to lose two electrons each, give it up at the positive electrode, and then you get this oxygen gas. But that isn't the end of the story. Because of the very high temperatures involved here, this oxygen gas actually reacts with the carbon electrode, the graphite, and it forms carbon dioxide. And this is the reason why you have to replace this electrode every 30 days, because the carbon is being removed by the oxygen. So in this last part of the video, we're going to be looking at half equations. So let's start off by looking at what happens to aluminium at the negative electrode. Well, we said that aluminium is going to gain three electrons. So we say plus three E minus, and that's going to form neutral aluminium atoms. At the positive electrode, we said that two oxide ions are pairing up. Because they're both losing two electrons each in total, Four electrons have been lost and we show that on the right hand side and that's pretty much it please don't forget to look at the exam questions in the description box there's a link there if you found it useful please like and leave a comment and uh, have a very lovely Christmas break